Good Friday morning, everyone. Hope you've had a good week and uh, coming to you a little bit later. As you know that we are having our Friday morning prayer breakfast again. And if any of you guys would like to join in with us, we will always be at the Pier Restaurant at Marshville on 6.30 or at 6.30 on Friday mornings each and every Friday. And we have a devotion time there together. We have some prayer requests, needs mentioned, and then we have some prayer and then we also enjoy a good breakfast. So uh, I'll be uh, coming to you after that each and every Friday morning. And this morning we were uh, gracious enough to have a good friend of mine, Marvin Tarleton, to bring our devotion. And I wanna share with you what Marvin shared with us and just hit uh, some of the high points. And Marvin asked us this morning, were we ready? Were we prepared for the battle that is uh, all around us each and every day in the United States as we strive to, to serve Christ, are we ready to go through those trials and those, those torments, those temptations, and also to battle uh, with evil spirits all around us and continue to be strong in our faith. Marvin told us that uh, this week he had to go down to the animal hospital and have his trusty companion dog, Bloke was his name, he had to have him put down because of his health issues. And Marvin said that even though he knew it was the best thing, he was not prepared. It was hard for him to hold the emotion and tears back as he walked in and told them why he was there. You know, our pets uh, touch our lives and we love them. And, and when you've grown so close to, to a dog or a cat or another pet for 18 years, it really hurts, doesn't it? And he likened that to our relationships with Jesus Christ. You know, we should continue to grow in those relationships and we should continue to feel the Spirit of God all around us. But sometimes we get so busy, we get so called up and, and we let the, the worldly things, the pleasurable things drag us away. And then also we get drugged down by the world and what the world says is okay and we know that it's simply not. But the devil has a way of getting us distraught and depressed, uh, looking at all the problems of our lives and not paying attention to the wonderful things that God is doing. You know, I've told you this before. If, if, if you can't see the great things of God all around us, then you're really not looking hard enough. So turn the television off. Don't watch the news. Watch the godly things of life and how he is working. So very quickly, I want to read some of the scripture verses that we looked at this morning. And we start out in Revelation and we're, uh, we're looking at the, the message that John has given to the churches. And uh, I want to start in chapter 2, beginning in verse 7. He says, Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches. To everyone who is victorious, and remember that word, victorious, also means overcomer, I will give fruit from the tree of life and the paradise of God. So that's Revelation 2, 7. Then we'll skip down to 11. Anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches whoever is victorious will not be harmed by the second death then skip down to verse 17 anyone with ears to hear must listen to the spirit and understand what he is saying to the churches to everyone who is victorious there's that word again or overcomer i will give some of the manna that has been hidden away in heaven and I will give to each one a white stone, and on that stone will be engraved a new name that no one understands except the one who receives it. And then all the way down to verse 26, to all who are victorious, who obey me in the very end, to them I will give authority over all nations. Are we prepared to have some authority in proclaiming and speaking God's word, he goes on to say they will rule the nations with an iron rod and smash them like clay pots. They will have the same authority that Jesus received from the Father. And then he says in verse 29, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he is saying. In chapter 3, Speaking to the church at Sardis, in verse 5, it says again, All who are victorious will be clothed in white, 
will never erase their names from the book of life, but I will announce before my Father and his angels that they are mine. In uh, verse 11, I am coming soon. Hold on to what you have so that no one will take away your crown. And in verse 12, all who are victorious will become pillars in the temple of my God, and they will never have to leave it, and I will write on them the name of God, and they will be citizens of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem, and I will also write on them a new name. In verse 13, anyone with ears to hear must listen to the Spirit and understand what he's saying to the churches. All through these verses, he's talking about even in the tough times of life, hold on, be strong, be faithful, be victorious, be overcomers. In verse 21, those who are victorious will sit with me on my throne, just as I was victorious and sat with the Father upon his throne. Once again, anyone who has ears to hear, anyone who has adopted the name of Christ, anyone who has become a new creation because what Christ has done for us, are you ready? Are you examining yourselves and me? Am I examining myself daily to know that I am prepared and my faith is genuine in Christ to do what the Father has called me to do. We find those words of an examining ourselves in 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 5. You might want to look those up. And finally, I want to close in Romans 8, verses 35, as I flip over there. Um, can anything ever separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing, nothing. Does it mean he no longer loves us if we have trouble or calamity or are persecuted or hungry or destitute or in danger or threatened with death? As the scriptures say, for your sake, we are killed every day. We are being slaughtered like sheep. And he says, no, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ Jesus who loved us. Well, I know this has been a little lengthy this morning, but hey, again, I want to ask you, are you prepared, faithfully, committed to fight the battles here on earth, to know that we have eternity waiting for us in heaven? And are you enthusiastic about your day-to-day -day life in telling others about Christ and living a godly example so others can see what God's doing in your life? Well, hey, I hope you have a great rest of your Friday. Just know that we love you. And if you'd love to come and join us on a Friday morning at our prayer breakfast, we would enjoy having you. Come on out and join us at the Pier Restaurant at 6.30 a.m. on Friday mornings. God bless you. Hope you have a great weekend. And I hope Sunday morning finds you in God's house somewhere. Take care.